wants to encourage us tonight, wants to refresh us tonight. We're on the halfway mark through our fast. And how many know we're going to finish strong? How many know we're getting stronger and stronger and stronger like we've never had before? And the Bible says right here in the book of Mark chapter 1, verse 9, it says, At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. How many know we're believing God for an open heaven. And the voice came from heaven saying, You are my son in whom I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals and the angels attended to him. Lord, we're ready. Lord, we're open. Lord, we're know, we know that you're taking us deeper. And God, we pray that as we go deeper, God, that we will dig in the place that you called us to dig and that we will have the posture that you want us to have so that you can continue to move in our church and through our lives, God. And Lord, I pray tonight, my God, that as you minister your word, God, I pray, God, that your word, God, will bear much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. This is a powerful portion of scripture. And during this period in Jesus' ministry, we see that this was the start of his ministry. The Bible says that he went to be baptized by John the Baptist, and right after that, he went and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, into a time of separation. But for the last few months, how many know we've been Spirit-led? We've been Spirit-led. The Spirit of God has been leading our pastors. The Spirit of God has been leading our church. The Spirit of God has been leading our movement. And we are in a time where we are being led by the Holy Spirit. And here, what, what the Lord teaches us, see, everything that Jesus did, he modeled for us. He modeled for his disciples. And what he modeled for us is he modeled that it's very important to walk in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit. And tonight, as we look at uh, uh, this message and, and, and walking in the Spirit, it's, it's important for us to, to realize that when we came to Christ, he, there were things that he gave us freely. It wasn't anything that we had to do, but freely we received certain things. One of the things that we received was salvation. We received our salvation. We received uh, uh, grace. We received the blood. We received redemption of our sins. And not only did we receive salvation, but we also received spiritual gifts. And we, and we looked at that last week, the, the importance of walking and activating the spiritual gifts that God has placed within us. But not only that, but God has given us his spirit. His spirit. Think about the spirit of God that's living inside of you. It is the spirit that comes from God. And the spirit that comes from God is dwelling within us. So what Jesus teaches us, he teaches us the importance of walking in the spirit. The, the spirit that God has given us is a spirit to teach us and to guide us. See, the church is God's idea. God established the church to give us a place to be useful and effective. You and I have been shaped for service. God has uniquely shaped us and designed us to make a difference. But in order to make a difference, we must have an active partnership with the Holy Spirit. Have an active partnership with his spirit, with the Holy Spirit, the early church actually teaches us the phases of a move of God. The first phase that the early church teaches us is that the disciples became aware of their need for the Spirit. 
Jesus began to teach them. And the Bible says that for 40 days he was teaching them things about the kingdom of God. And he told them, I must go so that the spirit may come. So that's why they went and began to get a hold of God right there on the day of Pentecost. And the spirit of God fell because they were aware of their need for the spirit. So there's an awareness that takes place. Not only that, but there is an awakening that takes place within our life. The disciples were not only aware, but they were awakened by the spirit at Pentecost. They were awakened. They felt something that they never felt before. They were, they, the, 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 the Holy Spirit was poured out into, into their lives and into that room. And it was something that they never felt before. And what it did, it awakened them. They were awakened. And not only does God move by making us aware and not only does God move by awakening the spirit of God within us but also he begins to activate his spirit within us we begin to become active and the disciples became active and that's what we begin to see we begin to see that the disciples became active in activating the power that was within them and that when they were activating this power the Bible says that they began to do signs and wonders and miracles And that's powerful because that begins to show you and I and encourage you and I that what the disciples were able to do, we're able to do. That what the disciples accomplished, we're able to accomplish. That when the disciples preached and when the disciples prayed and when the disciples laid hands on the sick and when the disciples began to put their hands on the plow in the early church, we began to see growth and transformation. And how many know that takes place when the Holy Spirit is active within our lives? He's active. He's moving. He's he's causing us to go deeper. He's causing us to begin to not just be aware of our need for God, but to really awaken what he's placed within us. When the Holy Spirit is active in us, he strengthens the body and causes unbelievers to believe. The way it works is God speaks it. The son administrates it. But how many know the spirit activates it? Everything that God has spoken, Jesus came and he put it in order. And everything that Jesus put in order, the Holy Spirit came and he began to manifest it and activate it within the disciples. And that's what he's doing within our lives. He's activating those gifts within us. He's activating that power within us. He's activating that need for God within us. He's activating our prayer life. He's activating our faith. There's nothing more powerful than a church with active faith. God is taking our faith to new levels and to new heights. And the faith that God is giving us is going to be an unstoppable faith. The faith that God's giving us is going to be a faith that that, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. The faith that God has given us is that not only in our church, but outside of the church, God's going to do miracles through our life. It's a powerful faith. So the way that we continue to walk in the spirit is we must understand the person, the purpose, and the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want us to look at that for a few moments. Let's look at number one, the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. The Holy Spirit is a person. And in order to be a person, you must have intelligence, a will, and emotions. Each and every one of us have intelligence each and every one of us have a will and each and every one of us have emotion and the holy spirit has intelligence because jesus uh, the apostle paul says no one knows the thoughts of god except the spirit of god the holy spirit knows the thoughts of god the holy spirit knows the plans of god the holy spirit knows the 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 the, the thoughts and, and, and the will and the plan that God has. And, and so that makes him a person. Not only that, but the Holy Spirit has a will. He has a will. And last week we were able to discover that he distributes the gifts individually just as he wills. 
In other words, when God is looking to heal somebody, he's looking for the gift of he- The Holy Spirit's looking for the gift of healing. When, when, when God wants to, to stir somebody's faith, he's looking for somebody with that power gift of faith. When God is looking to give somebody a word, he's looking for that person with prophecy, with knowledge, and with wisdom. When God is looking to do miracles, he's looking, but he does it according to when he wants to do it. How many know we don't do it when we want it? How many, how many know those things don't happen when we want them? Those things happen because God wants those things to happen. So he has a will. The Holy Spirit has a will. The Bible says he distributes the gifts according to his will. So in other words, that makes him a person. Not only that, but the Holy Spirit has emotion. The Holy Spirit can be grieved and can be quenched. The Holy Spirit can be grieved, the Bible talks about, and also quench. In other words, we grieve him when we ignore him. We grieve him when we ignore him. When the Holy Spirit is, t- is wooing us or the Holy Spirit is prompting us or when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us to do something and we don't do it, we quench the Holy Spirit. It's, it's really the difference between having a relationship with a stranger or having a relationship with somebody you know. If a stranger offends you, you're like, hey, you shake it off. But if a family member or a friend offends you, we know you're a little, a little more grieved or bothers you a little bit more. When a stranger does something, you're like, okay. But when it's somebody that you know, when it's somebody you're familiar with, when it's a family member, it affects us. Same thing with the Holy Spirit, because how many know the Spirit is in, you know, wants to be in relation and wants to be in partnership and wants us to walk with Him? The Bible says He is the, the He talks about that He is the helper. In other words, He is the Paracletos, He is the one that helps us. He is the one that is there to help us in our time of need. He is the one to make up for our weaknesses. He is the one that is there to help us when we are limited. And that's why it's so important for us to walk in the spirit. When we miss an appointment, how many know it becomes a disappointment? When we miss an appointment with the Holy Spirit, it becomes a disappointment. When we miss an appointment with God, it becomes a disappointment. I remember one moment, I was on my way out of a cafe, and I was on my way to my car, and I seen somebody in need, and I was, I was in a rush, and I felt the Holy Spirit saying to minister to that individual, and I got in my car, I turned on my car, and I began to feel the prompting even stronger. So I turned my car off, and I got off. Now, as I was walking to this person, it was, it was a young lady, she was crying. And the Holy Spirit just told me to tell her that God is the father to the fatherless. And I walked up to her and I said, you know, I know you don't know me. And God just wanted me to tell you that he is the father to the fatherless. And right then and there, she broke uncontrollably. She began to break and cry. And I began to ask her, is it okay if I pray for you? And I prayed for her. And after I prayed, she said, a few days ago, I just lost my father. You don't know what that meant. That means the world. And you never know when the Holy Spirit is prompting you. You never know when the Holy Spirit wants to use you. You never know when the Holy Spirit wants to guide you and wants to lead you to lift somebody up. He's a person. Therefore, it makes him personal. And God wants to be personal, not just with us, but how many know he wants to be personal through us? 
because he is a person and he walks with us and we're able to talk with him and we're able to fellowship with him and we're able to allow him to guide us and to lead us. And that makes it, that, that takes our relationship with God to a whole new level because we're walking in his spirit. What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Well, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is he speaks to us. The Bible says that the Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and wait near it. He speaks to us. He spoke to Philip. Philip was able to be used in a powerful way. Philip was able to be used in a great way. Philip, as as God was beginning to to set Philip up, he was able to use him to start revivals everywhere that he went. And the Bible says that Philip, that the Spirit told him. So in other words, the Holy Spirit speaks to us, uh, speaks to us, the Holy Spirit talks to us, the Holy Spirit communicates to us. Not only does he speak to us, but the Holy Spirit teaches us. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all the things that I said to you. That's why it's so important during this time to really continue to dig deep in the word of God. Because he will bring to remembrance his words. He will bring to remembrance. The Bible says that he will teach us all things, but this is our manual for him to teach us all these things. For him to equip us, for him to get teach us, for, for him to bring us understanding. Because the Bible says that when we cherish understanding, we prosper. So he teaches us, but he also brings to remembrance the things that we need to remember at the right time. That's why we must continue to get equipped in his word. He guides us. The spirit will guide you into all truth. He guides us. He guides us when we need direction. He guides us when we need to understand the next step. He guides us, you know, when we're confused, maybe about uh, the plan and the purpose that God has for our life. He's there to guide us and lead us. He comforts us. He's our comforter. He's our comforter in a time of loss. He's our comforter in a time of loneliness. He's our comforter. He is our comforter. You're able to experience God's comfort in ways that you've never experienced before when you're going through a time of loss. I remember experiencing that when I lost my father. I experienced God's comfort like I've never experienced before. And it was a supernatural comfort that carried me through the process. And there's comfort that God will begin to bring upon your life. And there's comfort that God will begin to bring along you when you're discouraged, when you're frustrated. He'll begin to comfort you because how many know the Holy Spirit is our comforter? He's our comforter. He speaks to us. He teaches us. He guides us. And he comforts us. He also prays for us. He prays for us. Sometimes when we cannot pray, he's there praying for us. That's one prayer how many know we can rely on. We can rely on the prayer of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he prays and he groans for you and I. That's a powerful prayer because we know that who he is praying to. He prays for us. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to guide. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to teach. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to comfort. The the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to pray for you and I. That's what begins to strengthen our prayers. That's what begins to encourage our prayers. Knowing that the Holy Spirit is praying for us continues to strengthen our prayer life. In order to walk in the spirit, we must continue to understand the person. We must continue to understand the the purpose. But lastly tonight, we must understand the power of the Holy Spirit. We've been accessing the power of the Holy Spirit like never before. The perfect example of walking in the power of the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Jesus is our example. After he was baptized, 
after he separated for 40 days, the Bible says he went to the temple and he opened to the book of Isaiah and he said, the spirit of the Lord is on me. He said, the spirit of the Lord is on me. He's on me to heal. He's on me to preach. And he's on me to proclaim the good news. When you go to work, the spirit of the Lord is on you. When you're at home, the spirit of the Lord is on you. When you're doing God's work, the spirit of the Lord is on you. And he gives you the power that you need in order to do what he's called you to do. He's giving us a new power. He's giving us a fresh power. He's, in, he's really building and strengthening our power because he's looking at you and I as his vessels. When Jesus died on the cross, he not only said, I'm going to go so that the spirit may come, but he died on the cross so that way his blood can purify vessels. And how many know that's what the blood does? The blood purifies you and I so that we can be the host for the Holy Ghost. And we become vessels and we become vessels of honor and useful vessels. And God begins to use our life to display his power. As Matthew comes tonight, Jesus is our example of walking in the spirit. Jesus is our example of being led by the spirit. Jesus is our example of rejoicing in the spirit. Jesus is our example of being empowered by the spirit. We follow that model. We follow that exampleship. He started his ministry and ended his ministry in the spirit. That's why he only needed a short time here on earth. He just needed a short time here on earth so that way the disciples can realize their need for his spirit and walk in the spirit. And he accomplished everything that he needed to accomplish because he was walking in the spirit. Our relationship with God is getting stronger. Our relationship with God is getting deeper. The Pharisees asked Jesus, why don't your disciples fast? And Jesus said, when the bridegroom is with the party, there's no need for them to fast. In other words, Jesus physically was with the disciples. Physically, he was leading the disciples. Physically, he was directing the disciples. Physically, he was teaching the disciples. He was there physically. But he said, later there's going to become a time where they will need to fast. Why? Because I'm not, I'm not going to be with them physically no more. In other words, during our time of separation and during our time, our devotion to God and during our time when we're sacrificing, we're separating unto the Lord, we're getting so close to God like if it's God here physically. We're getting so close to God, it's, it's as if we were walking with him. It's as we were being led by him. As he was teaching us right then and there. What he was telling his disciples is he was telling his disciples the need for them to get close to me will come later but they're going to have a helper. They're going to have a helper. They're going to have a helper. They're going to have a comforter. They're going to have a teacher. They're going to have somebody that's going to guide them and equip them and show them as if I was there with them. That's the power behind our separation. That's the power behind our, our time with God. That's the power behind. That's why if, 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 if this time maybe you haven't felt as strong as you should feel, well, this is the time to get reconnected with God. In other words, pray a little bit more. Study a little bit more. Be in God's presence a little bit more because this is your time. 
This is your time to experience what the disciples experienced. This is your time to experience the Holy Spirit like you've never experienced before. That's why I know for some of you, it's, it hasn't been hard because you've been spending time with God and you've been spending time in his presence and you've been spending time with him like never before. So you're saying, if I eat or don't eat, it doesn't matter. Because you're getting so close to God that your need and your desire, what does the Bible say? Walk in the spirit so that you don't gratify the desires of what? The flesh. That's why you're getting strong. That's why you're getting strong. But now what God wants to do, he wants to begin to activate us. He wants to begin to activate us. The Bible says to desire the most useful gifts. Think about the needs that are around you. If there's a need for healing, that's a gift to desire. If, there, if there's a need for miracles, that's a gift to desire. If there's a need for understanding, for knowledge, and for wisdom, that's a gift that should be desired. Desire the most helpful gifts. And God will begin to use you in that way. When I first gave my life to the Lord, the Lord was prompting me for weeks to minister to this one individual. He was pretty much the drug dealer for my high school. And the Lord put it on my heart. It was prompting me for weeks and prompting me for weeks and prompting me for weeks. And finally, I went to him and I said, can we talk? And I began to talk to him and just ask him questions and ask him how he was doing. And then I began to witness to him and minister to him. I began to tell him how much Jesus loved him. And without me having to ask him, he asked me, how can I accept Jesus in my life? And right there, he got converted. And maybe for several weeks, or maybe for, 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 for a time, or maybe for a period of time, the, the Holy Spirit will begin to prompt you, and will begin to tug at your heart and tug at your life. But when you step into the leading of the Holy Spirit. He will not only use you for that moment, but he'll continue to use your life. In other words, his spirit, his voice will become so familiar to you that it'll be like if he's speaking to you audibly. And you will just begin to flow and you'll just begin to walk. And wherever the leading of the Holy Spirit guides you and takes you, you're going to be like Philip. And wherever you go, the revival is going to follow. Wherever you go, the miracles are going to follow. Wherever you go, healing is going to follow. Wherever you go, faith is going to be stirred up. And wherever you go, God is going to use your life as you stand. The evidence of walking in the Spirit is fruits and gifts. He's given us the fruits of the Spirit. He's given us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit gets stronger, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit gets sweeter, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit it's not for the believer, but it's for others. And others will begin to eat of that fruit. And others will begin to eat of that love. And others will begin to eat of that patience. And others will begin to eat of that peace and that faithfulness. And then the gifts of the Holy Spirit, others will benefit. And others will be strengthened. The evidence of the Holy Spirit active in our lives is the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit. Because others are enjoying it. And others are getting blessed. And others are getting touched. It's like we talked about last week. It's not for status, it's for service. And the Holy and we become that vessel, that vessel of honor. 
where God begins to use our lives in ways that we've never seen him use us before. But there's times when we need his filling. There's times when we need him to fill us. Brand new and fresh, there's times in our life where we just need the Holy Spirit just to rain on us. And that's what we're going to see in the life of the disciples that Pentecost just didn't happen one time, but the Holy Spirit would fill them when they were coming together as one body and as one church. Sometimes he would give them power. Sometimes he would give them boldness. Sometimes he would give them tongues. But whatever they needed at that time, the Holy Spirit would be going to come down and fill their life. And I don't know what you need tonight, but I know the Holy Spirit does. And he's going to be going to fill you with what you need. He's going to be going to fill you with exactly what you need in order to be the man and the woman that he's called you to be. So right there, we're going to lift up your hands.